Hi, I'm Laura Chevalier, and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Google Ads API. In this video, I'm going to walk through a code example for enhanced conversions for leads in the Google Ads API. We already have an example available, so instead of writing it from scratch here, I'm going to visit the existing example to talk through what it's actually doing and highlight requirements and best practices as I go. If you haven't yet watched the introduction and usage flow videos, I highly recommend you watch those first and then return to this video. One note before we start, if you find this video helpful, let us know with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be notified about future videos. With that said, let's get started. You can find the code example in the remarketing folder within your client library's examples directory. I'll be showing the Java code example, but each client library has an equivalent example. Let's briefly recap how Enhanced Conversions for Leads works to get a picture of where the code example fits in. With Enhanced Conversions for Leads, you can import offline or untrackable conversions directly into Google Ads without needing to store the GCLID or Google Click ID. Your conversions are keyed by hashed PII instead of GCLID and then matched with the lead information that was sent by the Google tag when the user became a lead. Looking at the overall flow, after the user comes to your website by clicking on a Google ad, their information is stored in your CRM and in Google ads after they submit the lead form on your site. Later, when the user converts, you normalize and hash their identifiers, like their email address and phone number, and securely send them to the Google ads API. This is the piece that our code example covers. Google Ads then tries to match that PII to the information and the GCLID that was stored when the user submitted the lead form. If Google finds a match, reporting and bidding is updated with the enhanced conversion data. Now let's get back to the example. The first step of enhanced conversions for leads in the Google Ads API is to normalize and hash the user data. In our code example, we use sample data for the sake of demonstration. In reality, you would likely read first-party user data from a file or directly from a data store. This data should include the user data from the conversion, plus any additional identifiers you looked up from your CRM or database. Enhanced Conversions for Leads accepts hash identifiers for email address, phone number, and physical address. We have two functions to normalize and hash our data, which we'll call when constructing the user identifier objects in our click conversion. This normalize and hash function, which removes white space, lowercases the string, and uses the SHA-256 algorithm as required to hash the string. And then we have the normalize and hash email address function, which includes some additional logic to remove any periods before the domain in Gmail or Google Mail email addresses. Once it's done that, it calls the regular normalize and hash function. We'll call those normalize and hash functions when we construct the click conversion objects that we'll send to the API. Each click conversion object must be populated with at least one user identifier and one conversion action resource name. In our example, we'll populate it with two user identifier objects, one for email and one for phone number, as well as several optional fields. Let's take a look at how to construct the user identifier objects. We'll create a user identifier object for each normalized and hashed identifier and add those user identifiers to the click conversion. Email address is the minimum preferred user identifier, but we also add a phone number. Our example only includes one email address and one phone number, but remember that you might have more than one email address or phone number for the user if you stored additional identifiers for them in your CRM. As a best practice, you should include more identifiers if you have them to improve the likelihood that Google Ads finds a match for the conversion. You can include up to five identifiers on a given click conversion. One common mistake here is that people will try to put all of their user identifiers into a single user identifier object. Each user identifier object can only contain a single identifier, so trying to set multiple identifiers will just overwrite previously set identifiers. Instead, make sure you create separate user identifier objects for each identifier. Now we'll add the other required field, the conversion action resource name, which must be for the upload clicks conversion action we set up on our Google Ads conversion customer. Check out the introduction video if you're not sure what that is. Then we have some optional fields we can set. There's conversion date time, which must be after the time of the click associated with the GCLID Google Ads has on file. Then there's conversion value and currency code, which describe the value of the conversion. 
There's also the order ID, also referred to as transaction ID, which uniquely identifies the conversion event, and the GCLID, which again is optional, but which could improve performance if available. Lastly, there's consent, which was added in v15 of the API. Check the guide linked in the description for the latest information regarding consent. With those fields set, we can proceed to upload the click conversion using the conversion upload service. In practice, you'll likely have multiple click conversions to upload. We recommend grouping the operations into a single upload request instead of uploading each click conversion individually. You may also have offline conversion events which didn't come from Google Ads. We recommend uploading these as well for full and accurate conversion reporting. Note, however, that if the debug enabled field of the upload click conversions request object is set to true, the Google Ads API will perform additional validation and return a click not found error for any click conversion without a matching Google Ads conversion. Since these errors are expected when uploading non Google conversion events, you can set debug enabled to false once you've moved past development and testing to avoid excessive errors. The default for this field is false. Going back to our click conversion, you must set the customer ID in your request to your Google Ads conversion customer ID and set partial failure to true. These requirements apply to all conversion uploads, not just enhanced conversions for leads. Note that when you set partial failure to true, the API response header returns a success message, and any errors are returned in the partial failure error field of the response body. When implementing enhanced conversions for leads for the first time, make sure to review and address these errors. Once your implementation is complete, it's best to review your uploads by querying for the latest offline data diagnostics report. You can find guidance on that linked in the video description. All right, we've gone through the entire example. I hope you found value in this walkthrough. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching and see you next time.